again, Peabody here. Today, Sherman and I are going to visit a gym. The YMCA's? Mother Bowie's. Never heard of it. Not it, him. I still Never don't... Never mind, get into the Wayback Machine. As I was saying, today we are going back to Mississippi in the year 1825, and we shall visit the legendary James Bowie, who created the Bowie knife. In less time than it takes to tell, we found ourselves on the main street of Biloxi, Mississippi, facing a somewhat ornate-looking restaurant. Bowie's Beanery! Golly, I didn't know he owned a restaurant, Mr. Peabody. Neither does he, evidently. There he is over there, sitting on the curb. What are you doing out here, Mr. Bowie? Gets pretty lonesome in that there restaurant all by myself. <sighs> What about your customers? What's a customer? Someone who eats your food. No one eats my food. He took us inside the deserted establishment and led us to a table on which sat a huge four-pound, two-inch thick porterhouse steak. Mind if I take a bite, Mr. Bowie? Not at all. I'll cut you off a hunt. We stared in horror as Bowie produced a large bow revolver and pumped six shots into the steak. Look, Mr. Peabody, he didn't even dent it. This didn't bother our host, for he then picked up a large battle axe and <laughs> deftly cut the table in two. <laughs> Not the steak. Now you see why nobody eats here. They can't cut the steaks. I'm as good as room. Have you tried a knife? Oh, I wouldn't take the coward's way out. No, no, no. I mean, have you tried a knife on the steaks? Sure, but they just up and break. Watch. What you need is a knife stronger than any in the world. Yes, a Bowie knife. Wouldn't do no good less than I can get it by dinner time. I got a steak eaters convention coming in here, and if they don't eat, I'm banker up. Then there's no time to lose. We dashed across the street and into a general store. Knives? What kind of knives? What kind do you have? Big and small and sharp and dull and... This knife must be very unusual. Only one like that is a factory reject. It's too big, too heavy, and too sharp. Here it is. What he held up was to become famous as the Bowie knife. What do you give me for it? A nickel. Suddenly, an unexpected voice rang out from in back of us. A dime! He's trying to outbid us, Mr. Peabody. He wasn't the only one. I have a buck. A dollar. Yes, we were in the middle of a spirited auction. Two dollars. Three. Four. One thousand. Why do they want the knife so badly? Well, that's quite obvious, Sherman. The little fellow is named Jack. He wants it to be called the Jackknife. The portly fellow in the middle is named Pen. He wants it to be called... The pen knife. Who's the man on the end? Mr. Butterfield of the Butterfield stage line. He wants to call it a butter knife? No, he wants to call it a fork. But well, why? He's the village troublemaker. Just then, Bowie made his final bid. $6,872. Sold. Congratulations, Mr. Bowie. You now have your knife. I will have if I can borrow some money from either of you. You mean you don't have $6,872? Well, not quite. I got a nickel, though. That means we have to raise $6,871.95. And we didn't have much time for a glance out the window revealed the Steak Eaters Convention was already entering Bowie's restaurant. Golly, Mr. Peabody, we got two minutes to get the money. Just enough time for next door to Bowie's Beanery was the Biloxi Bank. In front of it were three horses with their motors running. That could mean but one thing, a holdup. Mr. Peabody, you're going in the wrong direction. The bank's over here. There was no time to explain. I made tracks to a schoolhouse on the edge of town. Seconds later, the robbers emerged from the bank, got on their steeds, and took off, going right past the schoolhouse. I thought it would be fitting and proper if they would be <laughs> told off. So, cutting the school bell... <laughs> Neatest job out, law kitchen, I ever saw. Here's your reward. Ten thousand dollars! All we need is six thousand eight hundred seventy-one dollars and ninety-five cents. The remainder goes to the school bell fund. And so, the school got its new bell, the storekeeper got his money, Slowly got his knife, and the steak eaters were able to cut their steaks. Thanks, Mr. Peabody. I owe it all to you. Poor Mr. Bowie having to lug those heavy steaks. Yes, as you can see, it had a damaging effect on his legs. My gosh, he's bow-legged. Bowie-legged, Sherman. Oh, Bowie, Mr. Peabody! Touché, Sherman. Mm -hmm.